Hello, my name's Rob and welcome to Swift Slots. And welcome back to part two of my Fly Renault Turbo 5 body shell and slot it HRS chassis conversion. So in this video, we're gonna be finishing this car because the other video running a little bit long. So we're gonna pick it up in this video, get the car finished and get it on the track and see if my little combination here all works. So back to the bench and let's get this car finished. These inserts are going to go into the center of the wheels and for that I'm going to need the lathe. So back over to the lathe. Right, there we are. Rear inserts all in place, looking very pretty. Right, let's get this chassis onto the body. Okay, so this is a great time to stop because the next stage I'm going to do off camera because it's really hard to do on camera and it's only a whole series of filing and dremeling and fitting but I'll come back to camera and show you what I've done afterwards and that is basically to, sh to shape in these blocks that I've glued in for the body mount. There are lots of different ways that I could have mounted this body and I've ended up putting in my own blocks because I think it's probably easier on balance. So the rear block holds the rear mount and the two front blocks are going to screw in at the end of these chassis rails. And all these blocks are, is a lump of polyurethane cast resin just chopped up. I use this for my day job. It's just basically plastic, really. So I've cut three chunks and I've glued them into the body and obviously got them roughed in so that it actually holds the body in the right position nicely so the next job i'm going to do now i've got these blocks roughly to height is just shape them in with the dremel give them all the clearances and then i'll come back to you and show you what i've done afterwards but all, my, all i'm going to do is wave a dremel around and just fettle back and forth back and forth until it's right that's all nothing special okay so after a little bit of filing and fettling about and uh, trimming and chopping i've rounded off all these mounts made them all look reasonably respectable thinned them out a little bit lost a little bit of the weight and now the chassis fits very nicely on those mounts and I've set it all up and the body's nice and level so the next job is to get some of these NSR body mounting screws mark out these three holes and drill them through and screw this body down so it's all in position nicely again I'll do that off camera as well because again it's a little bit tricky and I just want to focus and get it right and I'll come back Okay, so the chassis is now officially part of the body. I did it all off camera because it's very boring to film. All the wheels are centered, all the clearances are set. There's plenty of suspension in the back end. We've got a little bit of body float front and rear because of those NSR body mounts. And I also managed to get the wheels out to 57 and a half mil, which is only 100 thou or 2.5 mil or 330 seconds narrower than the maximum width of 60 mil allowed. So that's a good start. There's only two more jobs left to do on the chassis really, and that's make two little inserts to go inside those shock absorbers, so to speak, to limit the amount of suspension travel. And I just wanna take away, like I said earlier on, a little bit of material underneath this guide so the guide sinks up into the body just that little bit more. So the next job to do though now is to go at this body and thin it down and try and lose some weight. So we started off with a body at 11 grams, and then we put on all these plastic mounts. So I did use quite large mounts, I know, but I want it quite robust. And this resin that I've used is quite light. So let's get this body off and weigh it, and we'll see where we're starting from. And then we'll have a go at the Dremel and see what I can get the body down to. 
Okay, so with all the body screws removed, we've obviously increased a little bit of weight because of these mounts. So we'll see what we're dealing with to start with. 13 grams. 13 grams is where we're starting from. So let's see if I can remove at least the weight of these mounts out the roof and out the surrounding plastics with the Dremel. Okay, got some good news and some bad news. The good news is I've got this body down to 11.1 grams, exactly where we started from, having included these rather bulky body mounts. The bad news is I went a bit too greedy on the roof and I managed to melt the roof and a bit too greedy on the bonnet and I managed to melt the bonnet. Massive shame. Feel free to rip me apart in the comments because you won't make me feel any worse than I already do. But, oh well, it is what it is. I mean, I had wondered about repainting this body at some point anyway. Perhaps that will now necessitate it. But we are where we are with it. I could always mask off the roof and paint the roof and bonnet a different colour, maybe blue or something. It's not the end of the world. Just very disappointing. But the good news is it's down to 1.1 grams, which is exactly where we started from. So I suppose, you know, whatever. And it is going to be a racing car, so... You know, battle scars are expected. But anyway, never mind. Moving on, let's make the glass. So that's all the glass all in. Try and shine it across the light so you can see. And how I did it ended up being two pieces. I put the front screen in and then the other three sides in separately and I cut a hole in the top. So I was able to get the silver foil tape down off the glass onto the roof itself. So that's all that finished. Now we've just got to cut the interior, get them all trimmed in, join it through the middle get it painted, put the interior in as well. So I've saved you the pain of me cutting and snipping and trimming this interior into place, but all I've really done is taken about 10 mil out the middle, added these little wings on the sides, and now it all fits in there great, no problems at all. So that all fits in there like that, and then you can see it all fits neatly through there, can't really see much, it's black. So, just got to paint the interior now, put a couple of mock roll bar bars on there, and then just stick them in, and then she's almost done. Okay, so I've painted up the interior the best I can. I'm not very good at painting these interiors because I don't really have the imagination for painting the helmets, but they never really look all that convincing as drivers. I mean, they're all one piece of vacuum formed and these particular drivers remind me of something like the Predator movie but you know it is what it is I'm not gonna dwell on it for too long or look too hard because it just disappoints me but never mind what we can dwell on though is the roll cage and for that I've got some 1.1 mil styrene rod so all I'm simply going to do is drill six holes and then mount the interior into the body and then push the styrene up Get it into where I want it and then put a spot of glue on the back. And for the back end, I'm going to put a pair of them in loads like this. And then I'm going to make a cross brace. But they're not going to go across the top because I don't need that extra weight. So let's get this interior roughly mocked up into the body after drilling the six holes. And then I can start feeding the rod in and super gluing it on the inside. Then we drop it out, put the crossbars in and put it in for the last time.
And there we are, that's the interior all done and the roll cage all fitted. There's the crossbars in the back, a little bit of engine detail showing there and from the side. And uh, while you were there, Job, I fitted the sun visor. So we ended up with 11.1 grams after thinning the body and we're now at 14.7 grams. So hopefully that's not too bad. Now I feel so bad about the damage on the bonnet and the roof and now the bonnet's just developed a hole. I'm going to repair it all and I'm going to paint the bonnet and the roof in this Mr. Colour number five blue. It's a very nice blue and it'll go well with the red anyway. And then because the car has already got ELF sponsors on it in quite a few places and on the headlights, I've got these really nice ELF water slide transfers. So I'm gonna put some a nice big ELF on the roof and probably an ELF on the bonnet in the blue. And I think that'll look really, really nice anyway. It'll make it a little bit individual and it'll also repair all this horrible damage that I've put to the body and I won't feel quite so bad then. So let's crack on, let's get the roof all masked off and painted. Okay, so that's the body all fixed and repaired. It's a little bit of a change to the feel of the car, but at least it doesn't have holes in the bonnet and the roof now where there were holes. So I'm quite happy with that. Glass is all put back in. We're good to go again, back on track. So there's a couple of things left to finish on this body, which I will run through now on fast forward to save you the agony of watching me do it. One of them is fitting this little tiny aerial that's come out of the Skeletrix accessory pack for a Peugeot, if I'm not mistaken. So that's the little aerial, got to go on the roof. Then I want to make some windscreen wipers out of this extremely fine brass wire. I also have been lucky enough to find these spotlights from SRC. Now these are an amazing find. So I'm going to put those on as well, and they're going to look pretty epic, I think. And then the last job to do, which isn't actually prototypically correct, but I think it looks cool, so I'm going to do it anyway. We've got this post coming down from the body mount, matching up to the chassis. Now, obviously, the chassis stops flat on the bottom. It doesn't hook up like it probably should do to match this car, but it's not a chassis for this car. So we've ended up with this blank space here and this body post mounting. So I'm going to actually put a rear exhaust across here 
with two little tailpipes sticking out. Very Metro 6R4 like. So that was always the plan with this because I knew this area was going to be here, which is why I have allowed this body mount to come down. But uh, I think it'll look pretty smart, even though it's not prototypically right. So let's crack on, let's get this work done and get this body finished. So that's got the body pretty much finished. We've got the aerial, windscreen wipers, front spotlights, rear windscreen wiper, and little exhaust pipe as well. So after all that, what does the body weigh? It comes out at 15.6 grams all in with all the extra detail. Now I know that my other competition rally cars are hovering around the 17 to 18 gram per body range. So this is actually coming in reasonably underweight. It's a little bit porkier than I would have liked it to have been, but you know, it's got to look nice as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make two spacers to go underneath this spring and up against the back of the pod mounting hole there. And that will limit my suspension travel by the thickness of the piece of material that I'm going to use. And that piece is going to be this piece of 0.75 mil plastic card. There we are, that simple little fix has limited the suspension so that the chassis isn't actually now hitting the ground at all. We've still got nice suspension, but there's actually daylight underneath the chassis now. It's just limited, limited it back. So that will work for now. We'll run with that and see how we get on it when the body is on. Make sure we don't hit the top of the arches, but I think that's a pretty good start. And if it needs adjusting again, you can just make two new spaces to whatever thickness is needed and that can limit the travel really, really easily. Right, what I wanna do now is I'm gonna make a lead O-ring to go on the top of this guide tube here to do two things. First of all, to limit the amount of travel, the amount of drop, because as you can see, it can rotate all the way around. So we need to do that. But I also wanna put a bit of weight on the top of this guide because it actually helps to push the guide down. So it limits the drop and pushes the guide down. Now it's only gonna be probably a gram and a half at the most, maybe even two grams. It's not a lot, but it's just a little bit of something. And by putting it on the shaft itself, it's not actually having any influence on the chassis or the spring or anything. It's just pushing the guide and the guide only, regardless of what the actual chassis is doing. It's just literally pushing on the guide and nothing else. So every little bit helps. When you're going over a rally track and it's bumpy, every little bit helps. So let's make this lead O-ring.
there it is, the lead washer, made out of a, just a piece of scrap old lead, and it's turned up to about 10 mil, and it just push fits over the top of the guide, just to give the guide that little bit of extra weight. And how much does it weigh? It weighs 1.74 grams. So not a lot, but it's something. So if we put this back together again now, what we can see is you've got good clearance off with the front axle and you've still got a nice amount of spring and it's actually limiting the amount of throw that that guide can actually have because it's taking up the excess here. So if you wanted a bit more drop, you could always undo the screw, push the weight up a little tiny bit and gain a little bit of extra drop if you wanted to. But that's locking out at about a millimetre to spare. You don't want to go too much more than that because you could end up forcing it past the point anyway. So that's still got plenty of drop there. And there we are. So that's adding now just a hair of weight right over the guide and it's not affecting the rest of the car at all. So when we add up the weight for this car and we load up the pod with a bit of weight, we know that we got 1.75 grams right at the front, right on that guide anyway. So there we are. That's that done. So... Let's crack on, let's get the chassis finished, just in case of running the wires in, truing up the tyres, and she's finished. That brings me to the end of my little experiment to see if I can get an under width rally car to perform using this Fly Renault Turbo 5 body and the HRS chassis. And I think overall it's gone really, really well. So I guess you're wondering what times it did around Crow Valley. Now Crow Valley is not the most challenging rally track in the world, but it is a track that I use regularly to test. And from that, I can get a feel for what it's going to do out in the field and all the other tracks as well. So as I've said before, 55 seconds is okay. 50 seconds is quick and anything beyond 50 seconds is really flying. And that's where you need to be to get a really good car beyond 50 seconds. So how did it do first time round? It did this. But I wasn't really happy with that. I knew there was more in the car. I just had to push that little bit harder and it did take me a few tries to do it, but I got there in the end and then it did this. 
<laughs> that's more like it. 47.9. Now that's genuinely fast around Crow Valley and I'm very, very happy. It puts it right up there with some of the fastest competition cars that I've got. Now it was a bit tricky to get that 47.9. I did have to try quite a number of times to get it, but it'll do 48.3 all day long no problems whatsoever you can hold back and just put in those times lap after lap and it's not a problem but pushing that extra that's when it starts to show its tendencies on how the chassis performs and it does tend to want to tip before it slides because it's an eighth of an inch narrower than all the other cars it just has that tendency to tip before it slides but only tipping as you're really 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 on it and you give it power just in the wrong place. If you just go into a bend smoothly and power through, it doesn't actually want to tip. It just goes through, but it's only when you really upset it mid corner or go in just that, just that crazy bit too fast, then it'll tend to tip before it'll slide. But it's really predictable and it's a really, really good car. It really holds in there until the very, very last second. And you know, in that last second, you've probably gone far too far anyway. Probably nothing would hold in that point. So how did I find the HRS chassis to work with? An absolute joy. It goes together really well, lots of options, and I was very, very pleased with it. Performance, well, we know what the performance is like, and it's got plenty of mounting options. I didn't use the ones that it came with. I ended up using my own, but it all worked out really well. There's lots of options to do that. And how does the body perform? It performs great. I'm really pleased with it, even though it was really, really narrow. It's not very high, but it really works. The proportions all worked out well to give it some nice handling. Now, if I was to bring the tungsten putty right the way down and sort of lower the center of gravity right the way down i could probably get it to be more stable right on the very edge of performance but to be honest with you i set it up one a one shot deal and it's worked so don't fix what isn't broken really i guess so i really enjoyed this build and i really enjoyed the end result as well and i hope you have too so if you enjoyed this sort of content maybe you'll subscribe and if you hit the little bell button that'll be awesome so until the next time thank you very much